Hello guys, welcome to the Powerbomb Pro Project. My name is Berman and I'm here with one of my co-hosts. Daniel. And we are reviewing the Blue Beetle movie. And it's going to be a spoiler review too because everyone should have watched it already. And for anyone who didn't watch it, well too bad. You gotta go watch it again. So this is, I think this actually is a pretty good success for a DC movie. Like, it is a little off. There's a few things that I'm not, it's kind of don't, there's a few things I'm not happy with at the same time, but that's when we go into spoiler section. Just, just a quick overview that I think it was very fun. It has good, com it has good comedic timing with a few things that was good, tragic moments. The, what's it called, the uh, CGI with the suits, the armored and everything was very good. It looked kind of creepy first time I saw it, but it kind of grew on me. I think it felt really good, and they, they casted the characters very well. Each character was very was very great. The person who did uh, Hame, who did the uh, Blue Beetle, got his act, the actor's first name. He he did a great job. I think he's actually a very good Blue Beetle. He's probably perfect for the role too. So that's kind of my overview for that. What do you think, Danny, about this movie? So yeah, man, I thought it was a good movie. And yeah, the actor you're talking about that played Blue, Blue Beetle, his first name in real life is Sholo. And funny enough, I've actually been kind of a fan of his for quite a little bit because I got to know him as Miguel from Cobra Kai. And then he started doing a podcast with another character from Cobra Kai um, named Hawk. If you guys know Hawk from Cobra Kai, that's another character from the show I really like. So then, yeah, I went on my way to listen to their podcast, some of the episodes. And then, yeah, when I heard he was going to be Blue Beetle, I thought, you know, that's great. That's actually, that's absolutely great. And then, you know, because I already like Blue Beetle. I'm, I haven't really read many Blue Beetle comics. I'm not going to act like I have. But from what I've seen in Blue Beetle, uh, whether it's like through certain media, like video games or cartoons and other sorts, I have enjoyed what I've seen from Blue Beetle. So, you know, put the two together and I was like, all right. I'm rooting for this movie. I'm rooting for this movie to be a success, despite how I felt about the last few really bad DC movies, such as The Flash and Sajam 2. Yeah, that's a good thing. So let's go into the, the spoiler review with just talking about, first, the main character, who is Solo, who is playing his Blue Beetle. This was, I actually, I said, I already repeated, I do know, I recognized him from Cobra Kai, I watched it too. And I was like, ooh, that's going to be interesting to see. It fits the character. First time I saw it, I'm like, oh, it makes sense. So, like, the first time you see him, he's really over-dreaming. He wants to be a, uh, he wants to have a lot of money, big house, or, like, a very nice wall house, like a big mansion, pretty much. And, like, next time you see him, he's cleaning gum under a table. Like, it's a change, but it's interesting how he can, the dynamics of this whole thing. And I really loved the the dynamics with his family. His family is very good. Everyone who played his family, very nice. Uh, George Lopez, who plays the Uncle Rudy, very funny guy. I actually probably my my first, my second favorite character in them in the movie is probably him. He has a lot of funny things that happen. So that's something else, but. Everything for him is great. There's only one thing that's kind of it's annoying. I think it's just is not his fault. It's just the script fault. When the uh, in a movie, when I'm not going to call it Black Beetle, I'm going to call it uh, started the attack. Uh, Blue Beetle in the beginning, the first fight they ever had at Cord Industries. He was trying to reason with a dude, and he was shooting at him already. That to me just made no sense. Like you know, he's shooting at him. Don't stop. Don't stop and try to conversate. Well, try to like, defend. At least defend if you don't know how to attack. Just defend yourself. But it was kind of weird how that segued. But then it kind of fixed itself a little bit with this whole thing I really liked. And one of my biggest things that I, w I was loving about it was... And this happened uh, it was two parts between each other. It was the beginning of the movie's same fight scene where the Blue Beetle, the Scarab, took control of him really destroyed, pretty much destroyed Black Beetle, wanted to kill him. And then Javi said, no, don't kill him. Don't kill him. So they stopped. 
but then at the end of the movie, fighting against Blue Beetle, uh, upgraded, upgraded Blue Beetle versus upgraded uh, Black Beetle, he he uh, gave, became enraged, like aggressive, because he thought Rudy died. So he got uh, angry, got pissed off, and then got wanted to kill him himself. But then Scarab told him, "Don't, don't kill him, don't kill him. It does not. It's t and kind of tell him that that he was. It was not his fault. He was getting controlled by someone else. We're going to talk about a little bit. But I guess I, I think he's probably the most perfect character to play Blue Beetle out of any character that I, any any uh, actor I have seen today. He's probably the most accurate Blue Beetle. I would say. What do you think about this Blue Beetle? Other in the movie or something? No, yeah, I thought he killed it. And as a matter of fact, probably one of the highlights of the film was how he did his Blue Beetle. Um, and, you know, I will say a lot of people kind of like to argue against the generic tone of this film. And, you know, it's a big reason why some people didn't see it. But, yeah, I will say there are those moments where it does feel generic and it does kind of have a somewhat generic tone. However... I feel like there is a solid amount of heart in this film, and the story is and characters are good enough to carry your way through the whole film. And that especially, of course, includes Blue Beetle himself. Yeah. Let's go on to... Uh, it's more like pretty much the love interest for Blue Beetle, but it, she does play a very big role. Jenny Cord, who is played by Berna Martinez. Martinez? Maybe I butchered her last name, but it's okay. Her name is Bruna. She actually did a great job. I was interested to see how they were going to incorporate Cord into this whole thing, and I really liked how they incorporated uh, her uh, daughter, uh, Jenny Cord, not the dad because he already died. So it was very interesting to see this whole thing. And she just pretty much is kind of like a helper, trying to help get that scare off her back. And trying to. main thing is trying to get her trying to get company back from her evil, her, pretty much her evil stepmother. Uh, what's it called? The other cord. Victoria. Victoria Cord. I think it's yeah, pretty much more like a stepmother to me. He, she was very, like, she was very corrupt. Wanted to just money, just money, 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 pretty much. That's, whole, that's her concept herself. And for Ken, Jenny Cord, I think she's definitely a good fit for the the cord line, I would say. And an another one I uh, bring back to is the Victoria cord. The most interesting part about this thing is how she manipulated, again, Black Beetle. I can't remember his what his name in that show was. In the, sorry, in the movie, what well, was in my name, just call him Black Beetle. It's kinda, that's how I feel like it. Uh, he manipulated her him and pretty much made him lose every memory of his mother, his life, and just Kind of, and she kind of corrupted him into this into this evil murder machine, pretty much. I call it. But I think that it was interesting to kind of see that how he and she got karma very brutally by him blown up with uh, with Black Beetle too. So I actually like the contrast between Jenny Cord and Victoria Cord too. What do you think about these two cords? Is it? I mean, yeah, yeah, it was an interesting contrast. I can't really say much more to add on to what you said. You pretty much uh, made all the right points there. But yeah, I, I pretty much do agree with that. And I do think the, the contrast between not just them, but also our hero and our main villain also kind of um, adds on to that. Yeah, it's true. So, and... So I want to go back to what I, I talked about Rudy, who was played by George Lopez. Still saying that he's taught my number two favorite character in the movie. He's super funny. Good taglines. Everything has good uh, hits. Nothing sounds weird or off to him. I think it fits very well. And I love that too. And more, I'm just talking about his family. The uh, Ming I'm going to butcher her first name. Uh, Mingo Reyes, which is the sister of Hame, she was a good character too. I kind of like how she was kind of acting with her brother. The mother, Rico Reyes, very nice. 
I actually like her too. The dad, Alberto Reyes, that's a very interesting because how he kind of died, not by just try, trying to save his family, which is a very good, very uh, heroic way to go if you want to say anything about uh, Reyes' dad. And then last, and probably my favorite character, in uh, my favorite character in this is Nana Reyes. She is super funny. Like in the beginning of the movie, you kind of see her as very timid and not that much. But then in the in the action parts where she's just carrying a cannon with her, she makes me laugh every time because she just looks like a rep. She's like a rebel. She's like uh like a, a gorilla fighter. I would call her. She's so funny when I when I first time I just saw her shooting freaking. A cannon. That's just. It's very good. She's just. She's very. I love that kind of character to me. So I. I think the family worked out so well for the Reyes. So I like that. What do you think about the family yourself? I personally thought that um, the family and Tommy Reyes. I thought that whole dynamic added to the emotional point for. Most people, and a lot of people are kind of in a meaning, meaningful way, compared it to, uh, if that's even a word, meaningful, if, uh, kind of compared it to the Fast X in the whole family sense, which it's kind of funny, but yeah, I, I kind of get it. I mean, no, yeah, um, I feel like it all works, and I feel like it's not really shoved down the viewer's throat too much, so they are allowed to kind of just appreciate the dynamic more than feeling like it's forced for the sake of the story. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed that whole aspect as well. Yeah. And to finish it off, the villain of this whole thing, which is kind of combined villain of a Victoria Cord and the other Black Beetle, which is actually his name is Rio Max Trojo, which is the actor who played him. His real name in there was Conrad Corpex. Corpex. It is, he was a very interesting character because first time you think he's just a, like a mindless security guard, bodyguard. He didn't feel like anything, but like when you see him fight against Blue Beetle, he's very destructive. He was pretty much had his, he has his man-made scarab, which is very interesting. I like that setup. Like burned face, looks brutal. He was carrying in his hands like a necklace that we don't know that much about. We just see a necklace in his hand. So then we, uh, later on, when this, the main fight happens, the final fight between Blue Beetle, Black Beetle, or uh, Corbex, the is a very great fight. I actually think the fight was so good because how, how they were both kind of creating different weapons out of different things. Uh, how am I making a, the fight, like a, what's it called, the Buster Sword, kind of look a Buster Sword, and Gorgeous Corbex using cannon uh, swords, just different things, bus missiles, everything. And he looked very good, too. Both had a good look to him. And then you kind of find out that after what happened to him to make him this way during the war, during the war, he got bombed, and his mother got caught in the crossfire, pretty much. And he got burned. His face got burned. And it was all because of Victoria Cord's fault. But what happened really is that she just wanted she just wanted to do whatever he can to get money and whatever. And just took her and took that kid and made her into a weapon and kinda of controlled him. Uh we were erased anything from his past and made him pretty much loyal until uh Blue Beetle uh took sorry Re- made, made him regain all of his memories and say, I felt so guilty. And I kind of like how his redemption, the kind of redemption of himself, pretty much going suicide. Just suicided with Victoria saying, you're not going to go anywhere pretty much. And now this is your karma. So I kind of like how that kind of ended very well. Uh, so I think the villain, uh, both villains more or less, it did very, very, very well in this movie. What do you think, Dan? I think the villains, um, I will admit the villains were, again, I feel like the contrast in the story itself kind of helped the villain's sake more rather than the villains themselves. Because when I think about like 
the uniqueness or you know sort of what they bring individually as a villain compared to every other villain I've ever seen it wouldn't really be much but like I said with the story context and everything being there I feel like these villains work um, for this movie and they work for everything that this movie was going for yeah that's a good that's a good way to say it so it's pretty much we said everything we really wanted to say my rating for this, I would say, would be an 8. I really like this movie. I had a lot of fun watching it. It's great. And for, like, a Latino, too. Latinos would love it because there's a lot of Latino. And you talk about all the things that happen to Latinos. It's very great. And so I think they this movie helps Latinos show that they can act. They show they can be, they can participate in some really good movies. So that you probably after this movie, you probably expect to see a lot more of these Latinos in bigger, higher acting uh, roles. I would best, I would best guess. So I really like this movie. I'm gonna give this an eight for me. I'm gonna give this a seven. I thought this was good, uh, solid, enjoyable. While it's not gonna be the best movie you ever see, it is definitely more enjoyable than the past few installments of the DC. And thankfully, the movie has at least breaked even. And by the way things are going, it doesn't look like the, if it is going to be a, a box office bomb, it doesn't look like it will be at least as bad as the Shazam 2 and Flash box office bombs were. So that's an improvement, especially for the fact that this was supposed to only go on streaming services. So like, I, I think any money this movie's getting is kind of considered a win, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, it makes sense. I think that I, I'm hearing a lot. And most interesting thing that I heard on the news was... The sorry, Blue Beetle made more money uh, for the fir- for the first weekend than Barbie did, which kind of was interesting to hear that because how oh yeah, how- like it broke the streak because Barbie was on like a four week streak and then it was Barbie's fifth fifth week I I believe and then it was Blue Beetle's first and Blue Beetle got that number one that week. Yeah, so it was actually kind of interesting to hear that too. So technically, it makes sense how they why they broke even at the same time. So. It was interesting to say. So, let's end off this episode. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Vernon. And I've been Daniel. And i see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.